Welcome to the Inspirational Living Podcast. A special thanks to James Allen for becoming our newest monthly patron. If you would like to join James and dozens of other listeners in becoming a patron, you can do so for as little as a dollar a month. To learn more about the special rewards our patrons receive, please visit livinghour.org slash patron. Today's reading was edited and adapted from Dynamic Thought by Henry Thomas Hamblin, published in 1914. There has been a lot of nonsense written and spoken about the law of attraction. People have been taught that all they need to do is to adopt a certain mental attitude, think thoughts of success and abundance, and then sit and wait for the abundance of all good things to drop from the skies at their feet. The folly of it is seen when we find that these teachers of abundance and opulence have to work for a living by teaching the very thing which, if true, would save them from all the necessity of working. Suppose that it were true, then what is possible for one would be possible for all. And if all adopted this method of getting a living, then who would till the soil or make our clothes? Would everything we need come from the skies? Even if this were true, and we could draw all that we needed by the power of thought from the blue vault of heaven, then no one would have anything to do. Life would become stagnant, and the race would perish from inaction. Life is action. And if a person ceases to work, they at once begin to disintegrate and soon require six feet of earth wherein to cover their bones. When business people retire, they often die quickly. And those who, being born with riches, have no necessity to work for a living, still have to find some kind of work and interest in order to prevent themselves from mental and physical decay. There is no such thing as getting something for nothing. The principle of the square deal runs right through life and the universe. A business person who tries to get something for nothing, who in other words fails to give value for money, finally finds themselves without a customer. The square deal, reasonable profits, fair wages, honest, straightforward business integrity, all these will succeed and continue to succeed as long as there remain people to do business with. But those who try to squeeze dishonest profits out of the life and blood of the common people can only do business so long as the community allows them to. Even if a person could steal a fortune by unfair means, that is, by not giving good value for money, they would lose in another direction, exactly in proportion to that which they gain. Let someone make a fortune by dishonest practice. Let them snap their fingers and sneer at integrity and honor. Let them rejoice at what they have done. Let them think themselves a sharp and shrewd operator. Nevertheless, a nemesis awaits them. They will lose in love, peace of mind, happiness and health in exact proportion to their dishonest gain. They make money granted, but they lose that which money cannot buy. I have known people to be happy right up until they became wealthy. Then they became of all my acquaintances the most miserable. I have known ones who were healthy while they were comparatively poor and full of sickness and trouble when they became passing rich. There is a law of compensation, 
running through life and the universe, and you cannot avoid it. If you are to succeed, you must work and accomplish. If you are to receive the riches of the world, you must give of your best in exchange. That is where the law of attraction operates. Not by sitting still and expecting the impossible to happen, but by giving, in faith and confidence, your best efforts to the world. By calling upon your hidden powers, and by creating powerful thoughts, you attract yourself armies of thoughts of a similar kind, which passing into your subconscious mind are translated into actions of the highest type, the type that glories in achievement and that wins success. Thus, if you give your best to the world, the best will come back to you. Those people who expect to be successful without working for it take great comfort from John Burroughs' famous poem, the first verse of which is as follows. Serene I fold my hands and wait, nor care for wind or tide or sea. I rave no more against time or fate, for lo, my own shall come to me. Never was a sublime truth more perfectly expressed, but its meaning is the exact opposite to that which the no-work people attach to it. It does not mean that we can literally sit and think without effort good things into our lap. Instead, it describes the mental attitude of the person of faith, the individual who believes they can succeed. Having adjusted their mind to the correct attitude, they are serene and calm, knowing that their efforts in the outer world will be successful, because their inner mental world is in tune with all the higher forces. Burroughs' verse represents the mental attitude of a well-poised, confident woman and man. Such a person is always capable of the best and highest effort, because their mind is always at peace. And it is those whose minds are at rest who work the best. Therefore, those who think that they can become successful without translating their thoughts into actions are deluding themselves. Note again the last line of the verse. For lo, my own shall come to me. What is meant by my own? Obviously, your own can only be that to which you are entitled. Therefore, your own can only be that which you have earned, are earning, or are going to earn by service to others. In other words, you give your best to the world, and your own will be the best that comes back to you through the operation of the law of compensation. For example, let us say an engineer conceives of a bridge Shall they be deserving of payment if they keep it in their mind? No, let them transfer their mental image to paper and translate their drawings into actual steel and stone construction, and they will then become a blessing to thousands. They will be worthy of payment and greater rewards. Life demands of us a square deal a fair exchange. If we are to receive, we must give. If we give, we shall receive. Do not believe for one moment that chicanery, or underhanded dealing, or the taking advantage of other people's ignorance or weakness is going to lead to success over the long run, because it will not and cannot. I have known plenty of people splendidly equipped for the battle of life, brainy, resourceful, capable, 
and not lacking in courage. Yet they have not succeeded, simply because they did not play it straight. They were clever and capable, and could always do well at first, but they could never keep their clients, customers, or jobs, because they failed to give honest service in exchange for honest money. The world is crying out for honest, straightforward, and sincere lawyers, doctors, business people, politicians, and professionals. It calls for men and women of integrity, people who live their lives according to principle, instead of being mere opportunists, for people who love honor and truth, who believe in the principle of the square deal. The world wants those who will give their very best, and upon such people is willing to pour out its treasures in rich profusion. Principle and sincerity are needed today, more than ever. Women and men who can be trusted, professionals on whom a nation, a world, can rely. No great success is, or ever can be, possible without the quality of sincerity. No great achievement was ever won, except by those to whom honor and principle were as the very breath of life. Look at the lives of all the truly great and successful people that have ever lived, and we can only find sincerity of purpose a giving of their very best service to the world. The extent of their sincerity was the measure of their greatness. They gave of their best, and greatness and immortality was their reward. Now, you may not seek greatness. You may not desire to become a legend. Your idea of success may be but an increase of salary, a moderate fortune, or a well-paid position in your calling or profession. It makes no difference. Whatever your ambition may be, low or high, mean or great, you can only realize it if you are sincere. You must give your very best. You must somehow find expression for that which is within you. As you come into conscious realization of these inner gifts, you will have more to express. Therefore, your best will constantly be getting better, with the consequence being that your reward will be greater. In other words, as you develop and build up from within, so in like manner will your power to achieve be manifested in your life and success and prosperity be attracted to you. All this is dependent upon your giving freely. If you give grudgingly, you will receive but a scanty reward. But if you give fully and freely of the best that is within you, you will reap a rich and abundant harvest. Let me say it again. Give the best that is within you. Give your best thoughts, hold nothing back. Give your most faithful service, do not spare yourself, for all the divine forces are yours to share. Give to the utmost of all the powers, the emotions, the inspirations that are within you. Do this and never will you feel lacking. The universe is not run by caprice or chance. Everything is according to law. The law of compensation is immutable. It can never be evaded. Whatsoever ye meet shall be measured to you again. These are scientific facts. We hold, therefore, our lives and destinies in our own hands. We can give our best to the world, our best in service, in love, in devotion, in honesty, in faithfulness, 
in inspiration, in beauty, our best in all that we do or attempt to do, and back to us will come unerringly the highest good, the greatest joy, the best that life can offer. On the other hand, if we give poor service, try to get what we do not deserve, and in return we shall reap a harvest of trouble, disappointment, unhappiness, and failure. No longer can you offer the world the more or less imperfect service which has hitherto been the best that you could offer. Now you are entering the fullness and glory of the vast powers of your subliminal mind. Now you are controlling an ever-growing stream of creative thoughts. Now are all these inward forces being translated into action, and that action can only be better service, better work, higher accomplishment, more abundant success than you have ever known before. Let your imperfect work belong only to the past. The badly done labor, the mediocre project, the commonplace service, the half-hearted job, let it all go. It belongs to yesterday, and yesterday is dead. It belongs to the imperfect past. Choose to live now in a more perfect present and press on to a still more perfect future. The Inspirational Living Podcast is a production of The Living Hour and brought to you by the generous financial support of our patrons. Become our patron for as little as $3 a month to gain access to free transcripts and the series Our Sunday Talks which features thought-provoking readings on spirituality and spiritual growth. Thanks for listening. I look forward to talking with you next time.